In the late 19th century a continent rich in culture and resources became the playing field for a ruthless game of power, exploitation, and division. This was Africa, a land of diverse peoples, languages, and traditions. Yet, in the eyes of Europe's colonial powers, it was an unseen battlefield, a vast expanse to be claimed and carved up. The richness of Africa, its vibrant cultures and bountiful lands, were overshadowed by the looming specter of colonialism. The stage was set for what would become one of the most profound reshaping of a continent's destiny. Europe, in its hunger for power and resources, turned its gaze to Africa. A continent brimming with untapped potential and riches, Africa became the stage for a ruthless scramble by Europe's leading powers. Let's start with Britain. The British Empire, already vast and expansive, was driven by strategic motives. Africa offered a crucial link to India, the crown jewel of the empire. The Suez Canal in particular was a vital artery for Britain, shortening the maritime route to India. Economically, Africa's wealth of resources such as gold, diamonds, and crops like cotton and tea were irresistible. France on the other hand was motivated by a desire for prestige and a mission civilizatrice, a self-proclaimed civilizing mission. With Algeria as a foothold, France expanded its influence, seeking to spread its culture and language throughout Africa. Economically, they eyed Africa's raw materials and potential markets for French goods. Germany, a latecomer to the colonial game was driven by a desire to compete with Britain and France. Chancellor Bismarck saw colonies as a way to demonstrate Germany's growing power and secure resources, particularly in East Africa. The scramble for Africa was for Germany, a dance of power and prestige on the global stage. Belgium, under King Leopold II, pursued a brutal extractive colonial regime in the Congo. Driven by personal ambition and greed, Leopold exploited the Congo's rubber and ivory, leaving a legacy of atrocities that still echo today. Lastly, Portugal, one of the earliest colonial powers, was keen to maintain its global influence. Africa offered a chance to revive its declining power. The strategic location of Angola and Mozambique and their resources, particularly diamonds and gold, were key attractions. In essence the motives were as diverse as the powers themselves, ranging from strategic interests, economic gains, national prestige, to personal ambition. Yet, beneath these varied motives, a common thread ran, a disregard for the people whose lives would be forever changed. The race was on, and Africa was the prize. In 1884, the Berlin Conference set the rules of the game. This pivotal event, convened by Chancellor Bismarck of Germany, brought together 14 European nations to lay out their plans for Africa. The conference table was not round, nor was it fair. No African representative was included, no African voice was heard. The Berlin Conference formalized the process of partitioning Africa, a process likened to carving a cake, but this was no ordinary cake. It was a continent rich in culture, languages, kingdoms and resources. The European powers armed with pens and maps sliced through Africa with little regard for existing cultural, linguistic or political boundaries. Imagine a group of people who have never set foot on your land, never breathed your air or understood your customs, deciding your fate. They drew lines on a map, not caring that these lines cut through communities, separating families and disrupting centuries-old trade routes. They created new countries, oblivious to the fact that the people they were lumping together belonged to different tribes, spoke different languages, and followed different traditions. This was not just a carving of land, it was a carving of identity, a carving of history. The Europeans in their pursuit of power and wealth were not just dividing territory, they were dividing people, cultures, societies, they were imposing their own systems and structures, their own ways of thinking and being, onto a continent that had its own vibrant, complex and diverse ways of life. The consequences of this ruthless carving were profound and far-reaching. The artificial borders sowed seeds of discord that would sprout into conflicts and wars that continue to this day. The disregard for cultural and linguistic diversity fueled tensions and misunderstandings that persist in our times. The map of Africa was redrawn, not by its people but by foreign rulers with pens and a disregard for the human cost. The legacy of this carving is still visible today, in the borders that divide, in the conflicts that rage, in the struggle for identity and unity. But it is also visible in the resilience of the African people, in their ongoing fight for sovereignty, for dignity, for a future carved by their own hands.
The scramble for Africa was more than a reshaping of borders, it was a reshaping of lives, societies and futures. As the colonial powers carved up the African continent, they did not consider the cultural and ethnic lines that had long defined the region. Instead, arbitrary borders were drawn, lumping together diverse tribes and cultures, while tearing others apart. These artificial boundaries created by European colonial powers continue to fuel conflicts to this day. But the cost of colonialism was not just in the redrawing of borders. The exploitation of Africa's rich resources was another devastating blow. Lands were seized, and vast quantities of minerals, timber and other resources were extracted and shipped off to Europe, leaving the continent stripped of its wealth. The colonial powers in their thirst for wealth and dominance imposed forced labor on the African people. Men, women and even children were coerced into grueling work in mines, plantations and factories, often under brutal conditions. This cruel system of labor exploitation resulted in countless deaths and immense suffering. Colonialism also brought about a gradual erosion of African cultures. European languages, religions and ways of life were imposed, suppressing local traditions and languages. This cultural imperialism left a lasting impact, with many African societies struggling to reclaim their cultural identities even today. The colonial rulers also imposed their own systems of governance and law, disregarding long-standing tribal and communal systems. This often led to social and political instability, as the imposed systems were ill-suited to local contexts and needs. Many post-colonial states have grappled with these imposed systems, leading to political instability and conflict. In short, the scramble for Africa was a period of ruthless exploitation and destruction. It was a time when the continent's rich resources were plundered, its people exploited, and its cultures suppressed. The legacy of this dark chapter in history continues to reverberate across the continent, shaping its present and its future. The seeds of many of today's conflicts were sown during this era of ruthless exploitation. But Africa was not a silent victim. Its people fought back, resisted and showed remarkable resilience. In the face of colonial oppression the spirit of Africa roared back. From the Ashanti of West Africa to the Zulu in the South, many kingdoms and tribes staged fierce resistance against colonial rule. Their stories are testaments to the indomitable will of Africa. Take the Battle of Isandawana in January of 1879. The British, armed with superior weaponry, planned to swiftly quell the Zulu kingdom. But the Zulu warriors, using their traditional weapons and tactics, dealt a crushing defeat to the British forces, proving that the spirit of resistance was alive and powerful. In East Africa, the Maji Maji Rebellion united over 20 different ethnic groups against German colonial rule. Though ultimately unsuccessful, the uprising was a powerful symbol of Pan-African unity and defiance against foreign oppressors. And let's not forget the courageous women who stood up to colonial powers. Women like Ya Asantewa of the Ashanti Empire and Queen Nzinga of Ndongo, who led battles and negotiations against European colonizers, demonstrating the strength and resilience of African women leaders. These are but a few examples of the countless acts of resistance and resilience across the continent. Each story a testament to the spirit of Africa, each act of defiance a brick in the foundation of Africa's fight for freedom and sovereignty. In their struggle we see the spirit of Africa, indomitable and resilient. The scramble for Africa ended, but its dark legacy continues to cast a long shadow. The repercussions of this ruthless chapter in human history are still felt today. Post-colonial Africa has been grappling with a myriad of challenges, chief among them being the struggles for sovereignty, identity, and development. The arbitrary borders drawn by European powers disregarded ethnic, linguistic and cultural distinctions, leading to discord and conflict that persist to this day. Sovereignty, the right to self-governance, continues to be a struggle, as these nations strive to overcome the remnants of colonial rule. The imposition of foreign political systems and values has left a lasting impact, often resulting in political instability and corruption. Identity too has been a battleground. In the wake of colonial rule, African nations have been striving to reclaim and redefine their cultural heritage, often torn between traditional values and imposed Western ideals. The struggle to maintain cultural identity amidst the pressure of globalization is a delicate balancing act that these nations navigate daily. Development, the gateway to prosperity, is another challenge. Exploitation of resources during the colonial era left these countries economically vulnerable. Today, they strive to build robust economies despite the hurdles of poverty, inadequate infrastructure, 
and limited access to education and healthcare. Yet despite these challenges, there is a path forward. Ongoing efforts to overcome the dark legacy of colonialism are evident across the continent. African nations are harnessing their rich resources, both natural and human, to fuel economic growth. There are concerted efforts to build stronger institutions, promote good governance, and foster unity amidst diversity. Education and cultural preservation initiatives are helping to revive and maintain indigenous knowledge and traditions. International partnerships are being forged to address development challenges while the spirit of Pan-Africanism continues to inspire unity and cooperation among African nations. The scars of the past remain but so does the spirit of resistance, resilience and the unyielding pursuit of a brighter future. The journey is arduous, the road is long, but with each step, Africa moves towards a future defined not by its past, but by the collective will and determination of its people.